Hey guys, I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. It has been a while, but I am back and ready to get some tutorials done. So in this one, we're going to be making an umbrella with some techniques that I learned from Martin Perheniak's uh, live stream yesterday. So if you don't know who he is, go check him out. I'll put a link to the in the description of the live stream. Uh, he's a really great teacher, especially an illustrator. And in this one, we're not gonna be using the pen tool. We're gonna be using shapes to create an umbrella. We're gonna start by using the ellipse tool, and that's like the circle tool over here in the toolbar. So just grab that, the shortcut key for that is L. If you don't see it over here, you can click and hold and then select ellipse tool. And let's draw the first large shape of our umbrella. So you can just click and drag to draw out an oval. You don't have to hold shift. We actually want an oval shape for this one. And that looks about right. So what I'm going to do now is show my rulers by holding uh, Command R. That's kind of the shortcut key. You can also go up to View, down to Show Rulers right here. So Rulers, and then you can hide rulers or show rulers with Command R or Control R on a PC. Also, it might be helpful to turn on Smart Guides with Command U or just come in here to the View dropdown and turn those on. Make sure those are checkmarked. Those are going to be helpful to line things up later. What I want to do with these rulers is actually just pull out a guide. So if I click and drag from inside the ruler, I can pull out a guide here. And I'm going to line it up to the center, uh, kind of the horizontal center of this oval. The reason I did that is because we need to create the underside of the umbrella. And the underside is going to look something like this, you know, that umbrella E shape. So what we're going to do is create a couple more ellipses, ellipses, I don't know, plural of ellipse circles, ovals, and we're going to move them down here and duplicate them across. So let's go ahead and create another shape. doesn't matter where you start because I can, while I'm creating the shape, clicking and dragging and holding, I can hold space bar as well and move that shape around and then let go and then re, re sort of define it. So if I just create this oval here, hold space bar, and I'm going to have it sort of cross paths with where that guide and the oval does right there. And I'm going to let go. And so we have this oval shape here that crosses right across here. And I'm going to duplicate this by holding Option, clicking on the shape, holding Shift to keep it aligned, and just moving it over. I'm going to let go there. And then if I go up to Object Transform, I can actually do Transform again, or Command D, Control D on a PC. And what happens then is that it actually just repeats that last transformation. So if I do Command D, it's going to skip another copy out there and skip another copy across. Now these are not centered, so I'm going to grab everything and then shift click on the big oval to unselect it. And now that I have these, I can right click and group, also Command G. And then once those are grouped, if I shift click on the big circle, I've got this group selected and the big circle uh, oval selected. Click again on that oval without holding shift and we're going to align to this key object. This is our alignment panel up here and actually it's already set up. You can see the key. It's set up to align to key object and what we want to do is just bring these over so that they're all centered with this oval. And I can do that with horizontal align center. Boom, they're all centered up. Now I'm going to grab all of these shapes again. And we're going to use the Shape Builder tool, which is somewhere over here, right here. It's got these two circles, the hotkey for that, Shift-M. And what I can do with this, you'll notice that it, it, it recognizes each of the different shapes in here. And I can actually just hold Option and draw through all of these shapes and let go. And it deletes them all out. So we just drew this umbrella shape with shapes. We didn't have to use the Pen tool at all. Let me show you that again. Hold Option and you notice the cursor now has a minus on it. It has a plus normally, now it has a minus. Just click and drag through all that and it deletes them all out. So we've already got this top umbrella shape. Now for the uh, for the handle of it, you know, it's going to kind of loop down here, sort of like an upside down candy cane or something. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the rounded rectangle tool and we're going to just create a rectangle in here. And oh, that looks about right. And so this rectangle has no fill on it. It just has a stroke. And you can see, if you look at this, I'm going to align this so that the, uh, it's the right side of this is aligned to the center. You can sort of see that inside of here, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, there is this sort of J shape to it. 
So if we just up the stroke of this, let's do five. No, we're gonna do something like 20. Yeah, that's about, that's better. So if I were had a way to just cut this out, I could actually make the handle just out of this, uh, the stroke of this rectangle. So what I want to do now is actually convert this stroke to a shape itself. I'm gonna go up to Object, Expand. To do that, we get a little uh, window that pops up. I always just check Fill, check Stroke, just to make sure everything expands correctly. Hit OK, and now we have a shape instead of a stroke. And what we can do with this shape, there's this cool thing that he showed me we can do with the eraser tool. I never knew you could do this before. So over here in the tool panel, grab the eraser tool, shift plus E to uh, select that. And once I have the eraser tool and this shape selected, yes, I can go through and sort of erase paths on it and things like that. And I can make the, uh, with my bracket keys, I can make my, um, the cursor bigger and I can just erase through this. But what I can do is if I, as long as I have the uh, shape that I want to erase selected and only that shape and I hold option, click and drag, it creates this, uh, this rectangular box and you can see it's already covering up parts of that shape. And that's because if I let go of it, it's gonna delete out that part of that shape. So I really only have to make a selection there and then make a selection for this part and we'll, we'll go down to maybe here let go and I have deleted out that shape and now I have this perfect shape of the handle. Switch back to my selection tool with the shortcut key V. We need to give this umbrella some kind of a fill. Let's select a this sort of teal color and I'm gonna get rid of the stroke and then I'm gonna grab this uh, handle shape here, right click and arrange send to back and then let's drop this umbrella down a little bit. I selected it, I'm gonna shift click down just a little bit and I'm gonna delete out this guide and we pretty much have, oh, the guide must be locked. So if your guides are locked, go to guides and then unlock guides so I can delete him out. There we go. Now one thing I'm gonna do is I feel like this could use a little bit more uh, thickness to it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more black to that. Maybe bump that stroke up some. So there is your umbrella shape. We made this completely out of shapes. We didn't have to touch the pen tool whatsoever. So I hope you guys learned some interesting, cool techniques uh, by following this tutorial. And you can apply all of these to your own designs. What I would do is look at what you wanna draw, what you wanna make, and really find all the basic shapes in it. Like, can I make that face out of circles or that, you know, that car out of basic shapes, you know, rounded rectangles, circles. Can I use the shape builder tool to add and subtract shapes together to create the shape that I want? And what you'll find is that those shapes, when you create them that way, actually become a lot more defined, a lot more even, you know, with the pen tool, it's hard to get things perfect. It's hard to get that perfect, uh, you know, that perfect angle on those circles every time. Uh, so it's it's a way to keep it a little bit more defined, I think. Anyway, if you guys found this tutorial helpful, like this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.